Hello everyone. Here in this lecture, I am going to deal about the structure of pancreas. So, it is the accessory organ in the digestive system that releases some secretions, the enzyme on the surface of small intestine and that will further add in digestion of food substances. So, the pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ because it lies behind the peritoneum. Retro means behind. So, this is the retroperitoneal organ that lies behind the peritoneum as well as it lies behind the stomach. So, you can imagine here this is the pylorus part of the stomach and uh, I didn't mention here the stomach but just you can imagine like uh, anteriorly there is a stomach and it lies behind the stomach. So, pancreas has got four part that is head, the head is this region okay so this part is the head the narrow constricted region is the neck the part which is long and which runs toward the left side in upward manner is the body and the end tapering part is the tail uh, which is being attached with the hilum of the spleen so the hilum is the fissure or the depressed area in the spleen uh, it is the structure in the spleen that allows the blood vessels to enter in this organ. So, as you can see here, it is a J letter shaped organ. Yes, and it is of about 10 to 15 centimeter uh, long and 2.5 centimeter wide it is. And the head part of this organ uh, is lies within this concavity of the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of small intestine yes we know that so in this concavity of duodenum the head of pancreas lies so it extends from that to the hilum of the spleen so it is run obliquely transversely toward the left side yes so in the pancreas there are certain cells that plays important role as exocrinal as well as endocrinal uh, glands. So, before that we will see uh, the duct in the pancreas. So, basically there is two major duct uh, in the pancreas. So, one main duct here which lies uh, along the length of whole pancreas is the pancreatic duct and it is also being called as duct of Wilson. And the another duct which is branch of this main duct uh, run obliquely and superiorly to this main duct is the accessory duct that is duct of centaurine okay so this is the main duct pancreatic duct that is the duct of Wilsing and this is the duct which is branch from this main is the accessory duct okay and this open superiorly to this main duct in the duodenum so both duct the opening of both the duct open into the duodenal part of the small intestine because uh, these all duct carries pancreatic juice a secretion that releases from the cells from the pancreas so they carries the pancreatic juice that releases directly into this surface of duodenum that mixes with the food and digests the carbohydrate protein and fat okay so, here in this whole pancreas, there are the two specialized cells. In 99% per, uh, population, the cell which lies within this pancreas are called SNR cell or the SNIs. So, 99% these cells which lie within this pancreas plays a role as an exocrinal gland because these are the cells that they contain zymogen granules because they release certain secretions or certain enzyme through these cells and uh, these come out through these all duct system and then they enter into the major main pancreatic duct and that will release in the duodenal part. So, as these secretion releases through the duct and they come on the surface of duodenum because of that only these are called as exocrinal gland or the cells. 
so these snr cells releases the enzymes like uh, the pancreatic amylase that help in digestion of starch the pancreatic lipase that help in digestion of fat triglyceride into fatty acid and glycerol and the proteolytic enzyme which is released from the cell is the trypsinogen so here it is in inactive form which is being released through these cells okay uh, it is not being activated here as if it is active here only then it will cause damage to these all cells so there is again one certain uh, enzyme that releases through this cell is the trypsin inhibitor that inhibit the activation of trypsinogen okay so the trypsinogen is also releases through these cells and this all enzymes come through this duct on the surface of duodenum and here what happened in the duodenum in the mucosal lining of small intestine what happened there is one enzyme enterokinase is there uh, that is released from the brush border cells in the mucosal lining of small intestine that activate this inactive form of trypsinogen here okay and make it active in trypsin form so what happened the inactivated trypsinogen releases through these ducts this comes out and come in contact with the enterokinase the cell which releases uh, enterokinase is the brush water cell and make this trypsinogen in active form and again this activated trypsin make other inactive precursors which releases from these cells and allow them to be active and add in further digestion okay so all the proteolytic enzyme which are released from these cells are in inactive form and they are being activated by trypsin okay so in pancreas 99% the cell which lies within this pancreas are called snr cell that plays role as an exocrine gland because they release certain enzymes that uh, run along these all duct system and enter into the main duct and that releases on the surface of duodenum but the remaining 1% cells which lies within this pancreas are called islets of langerhans or the pancreatic islets these plays role as an endocrine gland because they releases certain hormone directly into the blood stream okay because certain blood vessels are there that surround these cells so they releases hormone directly into the blood stream and uh, affect on target cell so as playing the endocrine function by these all cells uh, they releases certain hormones and importantly one hormone is insulin so what insulin does it utilizes glucose in our body cells and thereby controls our blood uh, sugar level but suppose in certain circumstances where the pancreas fail to produce insulin then what will be happen it will not utilize these all glucose by the cells and uh, thereby the blood sugar level remain high okay so that may causes diabetes in a person so the cells the islets of langerhans releases certain hormones that includes glucagon insulin somatostatin pancreatic polypeptide so that all will discuss in endocrine function so these are the islets of langerhans that releases hormones directly into the blood stream and playing a role as an endocrine gland so all together the pancreas has exocrine as well as endocrine function now let's move on with the duct system so as i have mentioned here that uh, this is the main duct that is the pancreatic duct so before it releases its secretion directly into the duodenum it merges with the another duct so let's see which duct is that so here you can see this is the liver and in liver both the lobes have uh, in left side have the left hepatic duct and in right side there is a right hepatic duct okay and both hepatic duct merge together to form common hepatic duct and again here the another structure you can see here is the gallbladder 
and this gall bladder have one duct is called cystic duct. So here this cystic duct and the common hepatic duct merge together here and form common bile duct because it carries bile from this these organs okay. So this is the common bile duct which merge here before it open into the duodenum it merge with this main pancreatic duct and here this dilated region of these both duct is called hepatopancreatic ampulla or the ampulla of wetter okay so this dilated region is the ampulla of wetter and in front of that there is one sphincter what sphincter does it controls the release of secretion okay so this sphincter the smooth muscle sphincter control the secretion of the bile as well as the pancreatic juice into this duodenum so whenever the food which comes through this uh, stomach it come into the duodenal part and then only this allows the secretion to mix with this food particle okay so this sphincter that controls the movement of these all secretion is called the sphincter of hepatopancreatic ampulla or the sphincter of OD. So here we can see the common opening of this bile and the pancreatic juice open into the duodenal part and when it open into this part uh, it is enclosed by one mucosal fold. This opening is enclosed by one elevated mucosal fold. Here this elevated mucosal fold, the black in color is called the major duodenal papilla. So it is about 10 cm away from the pylorus part of the stomach. Okay, And superior to that, uh, approximately 2.5 cm superior to this major duodenal papilla, there is another elevated mucosal fold in the duodenum that is called minor duodenal papilla that allow this accessory duct to open into the duodenum okay so here the secretion from pancreatic juice composed of water salts and certain enzymes so the salt which is released through this juice is mainly made up of sodium bicarbonate that neutralizes the acidic content of food that comes through this stomach part because uh, if this acidic food comes in contact with small intestinal part then it can damage the lining of mucosa. So to neutralize this acidic food content sodium bicarbonate mixes with this food content and neutralizes the uh, acidity of the food. Okay. So here in this lecture we have studied with the structure of pancreas that is the part of accessory organ in digestive system. Thank you. 